So how does a 6,000 milliamp hour 3S LiPo pack like this compare with a giant supercapacitor like this? Let's find out. One of the most common comments that I get on the electric turbo videos is, why don't you use a supercapacitor instead of lithium cells? In fact, I'm using not LiPos, but LTOs. I get into that in this video a little bit, just a little bit later on. But I figured I'd put together a video which is probably the most comprehensive comparison and battery of tests between these two technologies that you'll see anywhere. In fact, we're not just gonna compare the size and weight, we're also gonna measure their internal resistance, which gives you an idea of their ability to deliver massive amounts of current. We're also gonna do a capacity discharge test. That's a bit of an eye opener, you know, which one of these actually stores more energy. And then we're gonna do a heavy load test at 300 amps to see how they perform under those conditions. So without further ado, let's get right at it. So let's start with the basics, weight. Let's see how our two contenders stack up. Here's a little 3S pack, and it weighs 0.9 pounds. And the super capacitor, which is actually six super caps, and I believe it's about 500 farads, it weighs 11 pounds. So this thing weighs about 12 times more than this thing. And by the way, You could fit 22 of these in the space of one of these. Let's move on to the other testing. So next up is measuring internal resistance. This measures it, I believe, at 1 kilohertz. This is a little tricky because each one of these probes has actually two probes and both have to make contact. But I can usually get this in there pretty good. I'm refraining from telling a terrible joke. And there you go, it's just under 12.6 volts, specifically 12.597 and 5.91 milliohms. And that's for the three cells in series. Now, Mr. Supercapacitor, let's bring this guy in. All right, probe one, probe two. 12.686 and 4.28 milliohms. So this one's about 1.5 milliohms lower. And of course that means you can draw more current from this one or the voltage drop under load is less with this than it would be with this. But just for comparison's sake, I'm gonna go and get one of the LTO cells that I'm using on the electric turbo setup in the LTD. I'll be right back. Okay, here it is. Yeah, let's get that monster out of here. So these guys, there's a reason why I'm using these. These are not lithium polymer like that. They're certainly not, of course, supercapacitors. What these are are lithium titanate oxide cells. And you are about to find out why I'm using these. So in order to make a 12 volt pack out of these guys, because the voltage is much lower, where does it say? 2.5 volts. In order to make a similar one, you would need, what, five of these guys. Make sure I get this in the right polarity. So multiply this result by five to get the equivalent resistance of the others. But let's see. All right, 0.18 milliohms. That's about right. This one's been in storage. It's just been sitting there for I don't know how many months. But let's call it 0.2. So if you have five of these in series, your total resistance would be what? One milliohm. So it's less than a quarter of even the supercapacitor. These guys can spit out a lot of current. So for our next test, we're gonna do basically a discharge test, which is more of a capacity test than an ability to deliver high current. We're gonna do the discharge test at about six amps. It'd take a little bit of fiddling around with this thing to get to approximately six amps. But what we're really looking at, and here I've sped it up to 50 times speed, what we're really looking at is the amp hours 
and the watt hours. That's the capacity. Really, it's the watt hours that we're interested in because that's the total energy available. And we took this down to three volts simply because you can take a super capacitor down to zero volts, actually. But, you know, three volts seem to be a reasonable voltage. Now here with the LiPo pack, same deal. We got it up to about six amps where the super capacitor lasted for about 12 minutes. This thing just went on and on and on. And of course I couldn't take it down to three volts because that would hurt the cells, but I took it down to 9.6 volts, which was a comfortable amount, but you can look, I mean, we're speeding this one up 200 times where the other one was sped up 50 times. That's a huge difference. So let's compare the two. You got the super capacitor on the left. You got the lipo pack on the right. The super capacitor was only good for one and a quarter amp hours and under 10 watt hours for something that big. And that's taking it all the way down to three volts for something that size. That actually kind of sucks. The lipo, on the other hand, was good for over six amp hours and over 70 watt hours. You're talking about a seven fold increase in capacity. Once again, that's huge. Finally, the most fun test, that's the heavy discharge test. I got it to 300 amps, ran a stopwatch for 10 seconds and graphed the voltage. So you can see the thing is going down pretty straight. I'm having trouble keeping a load on it at lower voltages. I just couldn't get the resistor low enough. Now on the LiPo pack, 300 was pretty easy to maintain. And just look at the difference in the graphs. I mean, there really is just no comparison between the two. After the first second, the lipo pack just basically dominates the thing. I mean, the difference is it, it's not even worth talking about. Once you start getting below eight volts, it's really going to be pretty worthless. So, you know, I mean, the super capacitor may be good for a, an instant hit, but not that much better than the lipo and certainly uh, not better. In fact, significantly worse than the LTO cells. Well, after all that testing, the only conclusion I can really come to is super capacitors aren't so super really, not in comparison to lithium polymer or especially LTO cells. The only advantage they have is you can recharge them a lot faster, but the power levels we're talking about, there's not a reasonable source that can do that anyway. Uh, then there's cycle life. Obviously this could be cycled, you know, half a million times to a million times. Uh, here, in fact, it's rated at 500,000 charge discharge cycles. You may get a few hundred out of this under good conditions. And out of the LTO cell that you saw earlier, that's rated about 30 to 50,000 cycles. So that's pretty good. That's longer than I'm going to be around for anyway. So that's really not a benefit. Go ahead and post a comment down below. Give me your input. I love reading people's comments. If you like this sort of thing, give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe because there's a lot more electric turbo stuff going on. In fact, right now, what we're doing is we're prepping all the other stuff that's coming up. I'll catch you all in the next one.